Hey guys, this is Dave Snyder. I'm going to give you a quick little demo of adding and editing guides on GiantBomb.com. So if you go to the guide section, which we're at right now, you'll see uh, some text just giving you a description about it. And you just go to the Start Now button, which will open up the uh, sort of guide wizard. And uh, I'm going to enter in a guide here that uh, was submitted to us by Godzilla Bankrolls, who uh, thankfully you know, gave us some stuff early. And he made a Team Fortress 2 guide uh, for the spy class. So I'm just going through and, you know, adding basic details. I'm saying, hey, this is a character class guide. I'm saying it's in progress. I'm giving it a version of one. And uh, I can just upload an image. Um, for this case, I'm just going to upload, you know, one of my images just for descriptive purposes and same as the rest of the site you just upload image it will automatically get added and then I'll go to the next section which is basically saying who can edit this guide and in this case I'm going to let other people edit it so I'm going to say owner with other authors and my other authors are going to be uh, Mr. Sean Koontz I'll add uh, Jeff and I'll add Ryan or there we go. Uh, the next part is adding a license to your guide. Now this is completely optional. Uh, basically our policy on Giant Bomb is you own your guide, it's yours completely. We don't really care to uh, mess around with it, but um, we have added some Creative Commons licensing, which is just a you know, pretty general, uh, very simple license that they've got a bunch of different options. So in this case I'm going to say attribution non-commercial, which just means Hey, uh, other people can use this guide for non-commercial uh, purposes as long as they attribute it, in this case, to um, Godzilla bankrolls. And you can add some, you know, extra license notes if you want, but uh, this is fine for me. And then you go ahead and attach it to pages. So I'm going to add it to, you know, Team Fortress uh, 2. And now that I'm done, I'm going to start editing my guide. And you can see that it's sort of thrown me into a blank slate. Uh, I've got some helper text here, which I'm just going to close since, you know, you're listening to me tell you how to do it. And basically, we've created three fake sections just to kind of show you, you know, what, what's out there. Um, this first one's editable right now. Um, most of the editing with Giant Bomb Guides exists in this right area, which is this table of contents. So I'm just going to quickly save that out. And you can see this is just, it's thrown in some, you know, Latin random stuff in here. Um, but let's go ahead and we'll look at a, you know, here's a text guide that I had originally. And we're just going to go ahead and convert it over. So you can see we've got an introduction, general info. Um, you just go over to this right side anytime you want to edit stuff the tools are right there you have a remove and add and an edit button so I'm just gonna you know change the name of this one and just call it introduction and as you can see as I change stuff on this right side it's changing stuff on the left side as well um, since we've got this edit area open I'm going to you know pull this uh, intro text over as well and just throw it in there and you can see it's the usual editor that we use everywhere and I just hit save and it saved it as introduction and it's thrown in that text so let's see what else he's got in here um, he's got another just sort of general info so let's edit this one and we'll call it um, we'll call it general info and again it's changing stuff on the right side um, he, I believe, just has this as, you know, sort of a, uh, a as just a title. So we're going to get rid of all this text here. And let's go ahead and save that. But we didn't want it under the introduction. We wanted it actually on the left side. So if you can see you can actually drag and drop these table of contents areas on the right side and it will dynamically change. So I can I can move those stuff under introduction if I want or I can move it back out and it's all pretty easy. So let's look at what his first section is. He's got uh, weapons. So let's edit this and we'll call it weapons. And since I know a couple of the 
uh, Team Fortress 2 weapons, I'm going to just add them in directly. So I'm going to use this plus button right here. It'll just add them in. And I know there is a butterfly knife. I know there is a cloak. And I know there is a revolver. As you can see, this is just adding sections. You know, we'll fill them in later, but I'm just, you know, sort of setting up my table of contents. Uh, let's see if I forgot something. Oh, I forgot there's the there's the sapper weapon. Um, and let's go through and uh, add some of this other stuff that he's got. So his first weapon. Um, He's got just some general text here about the weapon itself, or weapons in general. So we can just go and edit it. Again, it's on the right side. Just hit that edit button. And we're just going to change that text and save it. And it saved it directly in here. And the next part, uh, looks like he's got the revolver next. So looks like I made a mistake. And instead, I had the cloak in, in front of the revolver. But you can just easily drag and drop. And I'm going to move. Uh, cloak up in front of revolver right there. Uh, oh, actually revolver in front of cloak. So we'll add it right there directly and I'm just going to paste his content in and again I'm going to hit save. I'm going to do this for each one of his sections. He's got sapper next. So again it looks like I had it out of order so I'm just going to drag sapper up under revolver and then I'm just going to edit the section right there and throw his text in, hit save, uh, it'll save it right there, and uh, butterfly knife, we'll edit the butterfly knife, and as you can see you can actually um, move around content even once you've done stuff on the left side, so if I were right now to move butterfly knife above cloak, you'll see it actually does this on the right side or on the left side as well and it, it'll take whole chunks of text uh, whether you've got images or video anything that's in there uh, it should work so let's grab the cloak here and we will edit that and hit save and as you can see we've we've got a decent part of uh, a guide going here uh, since I've done a little bit already, why don't I, I'm going to hit the save button here in the guide history and what that actually does is it, it doesn't publish the guide, it just saves it sort of on the site so that you know, uh, I can come and if I'm editing it with somebody else we have a workable version that we can just go through and uh, actually play around with. Now if I want to actually publish the guide I'd hit this actual publish button and it, you know, it's giving me a default warning uh, saying, you know, do I want to actually publish this guy? That would actually put it on the site for other people to see. But right now, as a saved draft, it's uh, only av available for me to see it. And if I actually made an edit, like if I, you know, moved that butterfly knife back around, I could save a different version. And, you know, it's showing who saved it and the day that they did it. Uh, this way you can keep sort of like an accurate record of what you've actually done with your guide on the site. So, I'm going to move that butterfly knife back up and um, as you can see we actually move stuff around so if I want to get directly to a section I just click something and it will bring me right to it with a nice little smooth scroll. You'll notice the table of contents doesn't move so we're getting rid of like those old problems with guides where you had to copy and paste like some weird arbitrary code to actually try and find something. Here you've got the table of contents there at any time and like we said you can just you know this is just for you as the as the creator you can actually move sections around as you want uh, which is actually pretty cool. Anyways, as you can see, this is a pretty, pretty long guide, um, but I could go through and, and do the exact same thing. I could move stuff around uh, within the document. I could move them back. I, you know, can do a whole lot of stuff. Uh, one of the things that we did add was uh, we've added the ability to make tables now. So if you use this Create Table button, uh, you can see that, you know, I've got uh, some text here that I can, you know, add if I wanted to. You know, make a table heading and um, you know, add some you know, just tabular data underneath. Um, this is all pretty easy uh, and 
I'd imagine will help uh, guide authors just you know list out data of any sort. You can just hit save and it'll save uh, that table again. If you just want to move something, you just move it. So we've actually moved that there to the top. If I want to delete it, uh, you know, ooh, I made some mistakes. It'll give you a confirmation. You just say, oh, you know, I want to delete it. Um, it's all a pretty flexible system. Um, if at any point you need to actually edit, you know, the, the specific details about your guide, uh, like your publish settings, there's a button right here called Edit Guide Details, and here it's just bringing up that WYSIWYG that we had before. Uh, from here you can, you know, actually add new users if you wanted to, like if I want to add, uh, well, I guess I'll add Andy, uh, who's another developer here, and now Andy has the ability to come in and edit this guide. Basically anybody who's actually uh, edited a guide they now within their profile you can go to your guide section and it will show all the guides that you have on the site so here I've got a bunch of test ones that I've just been messing around with and it's given me a bunch of different stats you know basically who I've allowed to edit uh, guides you can see this Team Fortress 2 one here and it shows uh, you know four different people I can delete the guide from here I can edit it uh, I can see how many times it's been viewed or how many times it's been commented on uh, which is all pretty cool. It also showed just how many minutes people have, you know, been sitting actually on my guide itself. But uh, let's go back and edit that guide, and uh, we'll see some of the comment features. One of the nice things about guides is that people can actually go through and comment on individual sections. So if I wanted to comment on just the revolver, um, people uh, can click through, and they can just click. Um, you know, uh, it's always better to shoot someone in the head with your revolver. Uh, maybe not the most uh, helpful thing to say to somebody, but it is accurate. And it's actually now gone and saved that comment. When I refresh the page, you'll see it's got a one next to it. So we can actually go through and see that comment. Now, if we actually move that revolver as an author, uh, you know, lower in the page, it's still going to retain the comments that were there. This is going to allow users to basically, you know, uh, change your, you know, allow you to comment on just specific parts of the guide so that people can help you out. Um, one thing of note is that if you are the guide author, you can go through and actually delete uh, these comments if you need to, um, which I'll do since that one was a little bit silly. Anyways, let's look at... Um, you know how to actually publish these guides. If you go to uh, again to that bottom right, that guide history. Let's say I'm you know I'm pretty I'm pretty okay with the way that my guide is. I can just hit publish. I can say yes, publish my guide, and it'll say it's now live. So uh, we would know that it's live because if we go to the actual Team Fortress 2 page, it's going to show up there. Uh, that's about it with guides. I mean, uh, I could go through and create a big, huge, long one, but I'm sure you guys have probably already started. Um, hope you have fun with them. If you see any bugs, just uh, send me a PM. Uh, I'm snide at Giant Bomb. See you guys.